Hello, Terrence Lamb here for another tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to do a black and white tutorial in Lightroom 5. And uh, start off with an image that I already have preloaded here, uh, ready to go. If you're not familiar with Lightroom, look forward to future episodes where I'm going to show the basics of using Lightroom or how to uh, do some of the editing and catalog functions. It's a very powerful program, most certainly, and uh, I, I certainly will, will cover some of those things at a later date. But uh, for now, those of you who are familiar with Lightroom, follow along. Here I am in my library module. Is the very the, the very basic module where you can certainly look at uh, all the images that you have in mind and, uh, and and ready to go and of course the film strip on the bottom to show so I already have a, an image ready to go down here uh, so before I start uh, one of the things that I like to do um, when I'm starting with uh, Lightroom is I don't necessarily like to use the before and after function all the time now one of the things that I like to do is just create a virtual copy so right clicking on this image here right under create virtual copy just click on that and when uh, it indicated to me that it has copied here you can certainly see that I have a second copy ready to go you can do any edits in there and it won't affect your original I find that it's much easier to go back and forth between these two images just to give you a, a pers understanding of what's happening and let's go to the develop module here click on that I'm ready to go here so when, I, when I'm doing a black and white edit, uh, I like to have my histogram open so that I can see what's going on here. One of the things that I like to sh demonstrate and show in the power of Lightroom is that this histogram is more than just a display of what's going on. As you scroll over the various areas in the histogram, you can see that uh, there is a contextual display that indicates what is uh, you're, you're, you're scrolling over top of it. And each of these things are actually clickable and you can control them. So you can actually click on that and you can actually change the exposure. So you can see the image a little bit that is now changing here based on that exposure setting. It's, it's actually a, a really handy thing. If you double click on that, it just resets it back to zero. So you can always go back and forth just to see how that works. Now, this is actually a real simplified interface to what is happening in the basic palette. That's the palette that's uh, organized below. And the nice thing about Lightroom, and I believe that really carefully consider this, is that they've ordered this in order of operations, or at least order in the way that you should edit and, and work with an image. So in that basic palette, you'll see that most of those functions, and as I scroll over each of these ones, you can see again that it highlights up above. There we go. It's highlighting above what area that it's actually affecting on the histogram. You don't have to be an expert in understanding how a histogram works, but as you work with these sliders, it will give you a better understanding of what the histogram is doing there. So it's important to have that open. Now this image is generally has uh, its white balance done up pretty good. I, I'm not gonna really touch the white balance much. You can certainly tweak it. Now you can certainly change a slider um, and it can affect how the black and white is going to come out but i'm going to just leave it at the moment now in this tutorial I'm going to, if you saw my capture one tutorial i told you not to touch the exposure setting in lightroom it's actually okay to touch the exposure setting and i want to show you why so as i move this exposure setting down i want you to, to observe a look in the sky you can see that i'm making some uh, recovery down here I, this is actually one of the the the, the powerful things that lightroom allows you to do is to control the dynamic range by adjusting it through the exposure setting and so as i recover the highlights i'm gaining a little bit more detail in my my sky and then i'm going to be able to recover this lower section a little later but you can see even in the histogram let's go up to the histogram here you can see as i adjust my exposure you can see that uh, let's go back to the original by double clicking on exposure and you can see that it looked like there was no clipping going on here and there was no, no clipping warning that was indicated that it was clipping. But as I move the exposure slider, just watch, you can see that there's more information that's showing up in this last little bit here. And that's a little extra information that gives me, at least in here, if I wanna get some drama in a black and white image, I'm gonna be able to recover from pulling that from right, right, right from there. So I'm gonna bring it down. Uh, looks like I'm bringing it by almost a full stop. So that's actually a pretty good amount. The next thing I like to do with almost any, any image editor, uh, what most pe users have done 
uh, historically is the when they're trying to make an adjustment to the image, they'll, they'll, they'll bump the contrast up to make things look a little darker or blacker. Actually take your contrast and bring the slider down. So just actually watch the histogram up above here and see what's happening. Oops. You can see that as I bring the contrast up and down, you can see that it's stretching and pulling that image across. So I'm not so concerned about my mid-tones as much. So as I bring that contrast in, I'm actually compressing it a little bit on the inside and I'm expanding it on the outside. So by the nature of me doing this, I actually find that now I have highlight information that probably is not, not really relevant there anymore. Um, so I may actually make some a little bit of adjustments to my exposure just to bring it over a little bit. There we go. So one of the things of doing this is it flattens out the image. The next step is the highlights. So if you do all of this, you don't generally need to go in there and make a whole lot of adjustments with the highlight settings. So you can see that the highlights, uh, do I need to stretch any more of that highlight? I probably don't need to do a whole lot. I still bring in a little bit because um, if we look at the this area right above the sky here, if I just pull that highlight area in there, you can see that I can pull a little bit of uh, detail back into there. I like to have a little bit of shadow, um, but you can certainly, if you, you know, by personal preference, if you want to pull some, some stuff out of that shadow, you can still pull out more. Now look at this. This is a, this is a Sony a6000 that I'm using and it really pull, uh, pulls in a lot of detail in the shadow areas. This is rather impressive. I came from the Canon world. Um, I shot with Nikons as well. And, uh, I, I'm just extremely impressed with what you can pull out of the, the shadow area. If that's the look you're going for, that's great. Uh, we're doing a black and white, uh, processing here. So I'm not too worried about it. That's your personal preference. I mean, if you want to bring the shadow up there a little bit, you can make an adjustment. I, I just make a, a, a slight adjustment. Now this isn't, again, this is looking quite flat. Let's do take a look at our before and after. So this is our before image and this is our after image. You can see that I'm, I've done great steps in bringing back the, the sky. But look at this log. I want you to look at the little log as it go before and after. This is before and after. So I've really flattened everything out. So everything's looking a little flat. So I need to bring back my white point uh, up a little bit here. So the, my brightness is going to just bring that thing up. Watch the histogram carefully. You can see that I have a highlight warning, clipping warning that just showing up here. So I'm just going to bring it up just before that highlight warning. And now I'm going to bring my black down. So again, there is a potential for a clipping warning. There's my clipping warning when I go up too high. So uh, I'm just going to bring it down just a little bit. It's nice to have the darkest dark and the lightest light. I've lost a little bit of my shadow. I might pull up my shadow detail just a little bit. But by doing everything that I've done here, I'm just maintaining that I'm not going to get over amplify any settings and create too much noise. If, if you go into extremes in here, you're going to, you're going to find that you're going to have some modeling that's happening. And it's a very undesirable look when, when it starts to get really mottled looking everywhere. Um, let's take a look at before and after. So there's the before, there's the after. So as you can see, I actually now haven't, the, my contrast doesn't look very flat anymore. I've actually gained some dynamic range by doing, doing this, mostly in the sky. And uh, when I go to the black and white, this is actually going to be uh, very important and a, a good foundation to, uh, to making the, the black and white conversion really easy. So the last thing that uh, I like to do here in the basic, or the last couple things I like to do in the, the slider here is to control my clarity, which is my micro contrast. So in here, this is gonna bring up some of my texture details. I can over crank, I'm gonna over crank this on purpose so you can see what it looks like. Um, this is a, you know, if this is the look you're looking for, this kind of gives it a real strong, some, there are some, black and white films that have this. Um, it's very popular in HDR to uh, to create that over sharpened look. And I can even increase the vibrance in here. Um, and you can see what happens when I increase the vibrance. It just, it just gives it a very surreal, but over crisp and, and sharp look. Subjective, um, you know, I, 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 I personally like it. I don't necessarily do it, but you know, I do like looking at it. I think it's uh, it, it's visually very interesting. So this is just, there's just too much detail that's just being brought forward. So I really like to have my eye being led a little bit. So, but this, I, that's a personal preference. Let's take a look at before. So that's before and that's after, you know, this is, this is just kind of a sort of a typical high dynamic range kind of uh, editing that you could do for black and white. So let's just turn that down just a little bit. 
I don't touch the saturation. I only touch generally the vibrance, at least in this image. So most of that is just to, you know, help increase some of the blues in the sky and stuff like that. So when I go to my black and white conversion, you'll see the value of that. So let's go take a look at our tone curve. Tone curve is something that I don't touch a lot anymore. Although it, what was popular in the past was to uh, what we call tow the uh, tow the curve or make an S curve. So what we would often do is you know just push up and compress your your highlights and your shadows to create again another kind of high contrast looking image. So here I have it as high contrast, and if you look uh, sort of the before and after. That it's a, a certainly a, a a good look or an interesting look that you can go. So I, I I think that's a little bit too much. I'm going to take it down just a touch here. So let's just reset it back to 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 normal. So the next and the final thing to go in there and edit is your black and white setting. So the black and white setting, if I click on that, it automatically converts this to black and white. Adobe does a really good job of automatically editing. It looks for colors that are rich within the image and sort of just enhance that and brings it up. This is actually a pretty good uh, conversion. I really didn't have to do a whole lot with this. These are all, think of these all as color filters. Uh, if you shot film in, in, the, in the day of film, uh, you would put a filter to create different effects. Obviously, reds and orange would would be would affect skin tones and and so forth. While the greens, blues um, would be great for foliage and sky. So I'll just I'll move around this uh, blue slider so you can see what happens. You can see how it affects the sky. Now I'm gonna oh, you can see when I over crank it, what has happened to my sky? It's turned into this really mottled look. So Lightroom can be you, you can it, it's dangerous in the sense that you can overdo it. So I suggest, you know, just making sure that you keep it, you know, uh, fairly neutral and uh, close to the middle and not to overdo it. I like to make a, a couple adjustments here. You can see how the various colors are going to get affected by the different sliders. But because I had done so much work ahead of time in my basic slider, everything here is going to stay pretty much the same. You will also notice that uh, the vibrance and the saturation sliders have now all disappeared. This is something, this is why I, I sort of mentioned that you have to do it ahead of time. If you don't do it ahead of time, you're not going to get the same sort of effect of color that, uh, and, and the color control over these things. So I really sort of encourage you, you to make these adjustments beforehand. However, if you do want to try to play around with colors to see if it affects uh, different areas, you can still affect the uh, sliders in the, uh, the white balance slider, and they do affect the image in different ways. So as you can see that, you know, if I want to give a, a little bit of more um, uh, weight to a different color, I can certainly move that slide around. The temperature will affect the image in, a, in, in that way as well. So any of these sliders up here can also create a different effect. Lastly, um, the, uh, one of the areas that I did not uh, go in heavily into is the effects area. Well, this is one of my favorite areas to 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 create a little bit of a, a, a le leading the eye. I, I took this photograph of this this log because it was I found it really interesting how it led your eye uh, just sort of this line into the harbor. So maybe I just want to enhance that, maybe just tone down a little bit the other, other areas. So I like using a little bit of a post vignette um, effect in here. So the post vignette effect in here um, is set to high highlight priority. And you can move that slider back and forth and you can see how it affects it. So I'm going to crank this over to the, the, the extreme so you can see the shape. So the thing that I really like in uh, in Lightroom is just how much you can control the vignette. So I've actually put it over to the extremes here, and you can see that this midpoint shows you where it starts. You can affect the roundness of it, so you can make it look really quite round or squarish. There we go, it's gone more roundish or more squarish to the edges. Go a little bit more ovalish this way there. And then the feather gives you sort of a nice softer effect. Now I've gone to the extremes here. I'm going to turn tune, turn, tune, turn this down just a touch. Now the area that I find is one of the more powerful features within the vignette feature of Lightroom is this highlight feature. So I like to crank this uh, pretty maximum. And as you can see, let's just take a look at the sky here. By cranking the highlight feature, it actually gets rid of most of that vignette. It doesn't get affected. The only area that's affected is sort of in the darker tones. And you can see how this is now leading my eye or just wrapping my eye into here and looking like uh, it was meant to be. 
Uh, I, I prefer this style of vignette because now it doesn't look like I'm looking through a tunnel. And now it actually looks like uh, a little bit more like human vision that's leading the eye into the image. Let's take a look at a, at a before and after. So there's the before and then there's the after. A little more drab in the sky, a little bit more control of the tone. I've gotten rich, rich gray tones in here and a lot of um, dynamic range just by using the sliders. And as you can see, you know, really just even just light touches on the shadow details and the highlight details. If I want to bring up some of that, I can certainly bring up some of that. that. If I want to make my image look a little flatter, bring up that shadow. If I want to bring it a little bit more contrast here, I can certainly bring those sliders down. But for the most part, if you if you set this up ahead of time, get this all managed in the beginning and build a foundation before you actually go to the black and white conversion, you're going to end up with a really sharp looking black and white image. So thank you for watching and look forward to uh, future tutorials uh, as I post them.